Sometimes I wonder why my life is unending cycle of battle and conflict. But the more I think on it, the conflict of my life goes straight to my blood and bones. So let me begin at the beginning. As the never-ending squabbles of the fiery veneer and the battle-hungry Acer are often wont to do, on a day long past they spilled over into the grey hills of Sumeria. My father was among the warriors of the Golden Horde raging through the borderlands that day, as they viciously pursued their quarry after the tide of battle turned in their favor, heedless of the grim death that would await them if a Sumerian clan came across their path. The veneer sought for respite over a shallow river and into a pasture land, running full bore into a flock of sheep. Swearing at the delay, they began to hack their way through them viciously, when they ran into the Sumerian lass who was their tender. With a flurry of bone-breaking blows, she used her staff to defend her flock, and many of veneer men would have never again walked without a limp if they'd have survived the day. The distraction, or the sheep and the unexpected tenacity of their shepherdess, was enough to delay the veneer so that their flaxen-haired pursuers fell on them from behind and utterly slaughtered them before they could incite their revenge on the dark-haired lass. After their battle rage was spent and their thirst for combat slaked on the blood of their veneer foes, the troop was about to decide the fate of the Sumerian girl when one man spoke up and reasoned, We have enough on our clan's hands with the veneer trying to pillage our wheat fields. The last thing we need is fell-handed Sumerians at our back door with the foul veneer at the front. Let us take our trophies, and perhaps a side of mutton these shades have generously slaughtered for us, and make our way home in victory. The promise of honor and a free meal was enough to distract the company, and they made their way north, though not before the young warrior and the shepherdess locked eyes, hers full of thankfulness for saving her from the sure raping and death that would have followed, and his with a strange feeling he had never known, but something about the strength of the young woman standing fearlessly in front of a group of veneer warriors, and something about the chiseled beauty that reflected in that strength made him realize that he would have to visit these hills again. The temptation of a trade in wheat beer, something wholly new to the border clans who had never had anything to do with an Aesir that didn't involve the point of a sword, was enough to entice the village of Clan Snowhawk to allow a very carefully watched foray into town on occasion to trade for some wool and salted mutton to take back north. Though if the town elders knew the real purpose of the trading trips, a blooming love that crossed a taboo that was as old as hills, then he would have died as surely as if he were spying out the town for a raid, and perhaps more slowly. But nothing could stop them, and the wealth he acquired was enough so that one day they disappeared. After picking up a wagon loaded with barrels of his wares packed in mountain snow, they made their way to Nemedia. Ulfur never looked back, for his love for Reagan was enough to stave off any homesickness, though he was seen on occasion in his home village to arrange for shipments of the wheat beer that was worth its weight in silver in the distant lands of Nemedia. This is the tale told to me by my mother, and her lessons in the cultures of the land of my blood and the land of my birth helped me in my early career as a merchant, a smuggler, and often my own caravan guard. But no matter what land I have roamed into, none have ever truly seemed home and no matter where I go, it seems a black doom always followed. While my luck was never fair nor ill beyond what I made, it seems that like the ravens flying ahead of the thunderstorm, I am the harbinger of some dire fate wherever I go. That is why I am called by some the Storm Raven, and to this day it's the only name I am known by in many places that I have plied my trade, and to those who have tasted my wheat beer. I tend to keep way stations near important centers of my trade, one in Sumeria, just outside Clan Snowhawk, where being able to pass a fair Sumerian has its convenience. And I was even recognized by my grandfather by, he said, the familiar look in my eyes. I am even tentatively accepted there. One in the Acer homelands in Nordheim, where passing as a somewhat dark Acer keeps my head firmly attached. One in Nemedia, near where my father started the trading company I now lead. And of course, one near Tarantia, where my beer seems to flow continuously into the bottomless gullet of Aquilonians and foreign adventurers alike. I keep a supply of horribly disfiguring Stygian poisons that I drop into random barrels, well documented, mind you, to discourage thieves. And the strange and brightly colored corpses the poison leaves makes equally good deterrence so that I need not go far to restock my caravan 
caravans that I take from town to town, and even stopping at the hold of an occasional new lordling. One fine day, I was spiking a couple of would-be thieves to the entranceway of my Aquilonian compound, when I saw a lumbering brute coming down the path. I acted unalarmed, though I kept my weapon near at hand. I hailed him cordially and put on my merchant face, all the while my hand stayed inches from the hilt of one weapon or another. Unfortunately, I did not see his slithering companion who stunk of the spices and silks of a Stygian snake lover, and that is all I remember of that day until now, sitting on this barge, rowing and rowing and rowing. But what was that noise? Have we run aground? I ride an ill wind, just ahead of chaos. I am the harbinger of violence, who carries a heavy doom. I am he that comes before the storm on black wings. I am Sturmrabe, the Storm Raven.